What's up? Welcome back to Beat Goblin. This is going to be a bit of a ramble, but this is going somewhere, I promise. I want to talk about AI art, the proliferation of AI tools in general, and what I'm going to call futurism brain rot. And if you stick with me, hopefully I can take this somewhere interesting. So real quick, to toot my own horn just a tiny bit, I have been playing around with AI before it really blew up into the public consciousness. Like neural network, machine machine learning type stuff. I used it to generate music that was using my own music as a starting point and then used that to basically go off and generate uh, nightmare fuel. And I've been playing around with AI art generators like right before they blew up. I was an early adopter and so I've had a bit of extra time to think about this stuff. Now, I do want to say, for the record, when I did my two videos on this channel playing around with AI art generators, I said in that video, hey, we should be careful with these because they are trained on images drawn and made by real humans and uh, probably not with those humans' permission. And so there's a likelihood that the AI art generator could spit out something that's a pretty blatant ripoff of something that a human person made. And so you should be careful about using them if you're a musician for things like album artwork. I stand behind that. In fact, I think I've only been proven right with that, but I actually think I didn't go far enough because I didn't let that stop me from just dipping my toes into the world of using AI art generation for just a couple of singles that I put on Spotify. And I'm probably not going to like change those in retrospect or anything. I'm just going to let those be a little time capsule. But between then and now, things have accelerated. AI has exploded into the public consciousness and people have started talking about some of the objections that I raised early on. And I want to get back to those. But I want to add... Uh, beyond the ethical concern of using AI art for commercial purposes, I want to add an additional thing, which is the aesthetic concerns of using AI art. This is by a metal band that I quite like. I don't want to pick on them or give them a hard time. And this song is quite good if you like metalcore. But I took one look at this and went, yep, that's an AI generated album artwork. You can tell because of the way that it is. Because I've played around with these AI art generators quite a bit, and so I can recognize the telltale signs very easily. For instance, these blobby, spindly buildings in the background, the fact that this person and their clothing doesn't quite make sense, the fake painterly look, this, even down to like the composition, this screams Midjourney to me. And to me, it's quite obvious that they generated that album artwork with Midjourney. Now, once again, I'm not trying to give them a hard time for that, but my strong guess is that now that it's become a lot more common, it's no longer like a niche thing that just a few nerds were playing around with, I think more and more people are going to start to be able to tell when an image was generated with AI, and that kind of style, or even that lack of style, is going to start to be maybe a little bit a, uh, a feature of its time and maybe not in a way that's going to age all that well, like puke green carpet or certain 80s outfits where you're like, wow, that sure is aggressively of its time and looks a little jank now. I think a lot of AI art is going to age in a similar way. And I'm including stuff that I've generated and used in that list. I don't think it's actually going to age all that well. And plus, you actually see the pendulum swinging back from, hey, this looks cool, to actually, this is aesthetically vapid and looks terrible. And I don't always agree with that. I can be my own person and think for myself. For instance, I've generated some stuff that I quite like and think is quite cool, but I can't get around my ethical concerns with it, which is that... Yeah, it's ripping people off. There was an incident with, I don't remember exactly which generator this is. I think it was Stable Diffusion off the top of my head. But they, as far as I can recall, scraped a bunch of images from Getty Images and then had the nasty habit of like jankily trying to reproduce the Getty Images watermark in the AI generated images. And that should cause us to pause and go, wait a second, what are we doing here? Should we really use this for commercial purposes? And then I've talked to some of my artist friends, the people whose opinion actually matters here. And I've gotten a range of opinions. One of my friends it seems fine with it, 
and he's also a writer so he's happy to use it to like generate inspiration and then use that as a jumping off point to actually make something himself for real another artist friend of mine hates it and is like this is gross and artists already have a hard enough time getting paid fairly for their work this is not helping so I do want to say here, what I'm about to say does come from a place of privilege. I am lucky enough to make enough money off of this whole YouTube and music thing to be able to afford to pay artists to do artwork for me. That's like huge and not everyone can afford to do that. I didn't used to be able to afford to do that. And uh, I am friends with some very talented people. So once again, I'm lucky in this respect. For instance, my friend Ian, who runs Coastland Creative, you know, he does a lot of my album art, he edits most of my videos for me, and I'm lucky enough to be able to afford to pay him to make awesome stuff like this. Or my friend Destin, who did all the Beat Goblin art. Absolutely incredible stuff, and I just love hiring the homies to work on projects like this. So, with that in mind, I personally am going to make a commitment to not use AI art directly for commercial purposes. Going forward, any album or single I put out will use human-made art, probably by one of my friends who I will pay fairly for that. And uh, I'll probably still continue to tinker with AI art a little bit. I might use it as an inspiration generator, maybe as a starting point to be like, well, hey, can you make something that's like vaguely like this? Or maybe I'll even use it for like a blurred background in a YouTube thumbnail if I want to just like generate a generic cityscape or something. But I will not directly use it for album art. That, that, that's like a commitment I am making. I am lucky to be able to make that commitment, but that's where I am personally drawing the line for myself. I think what AI art is still gonna be good for is just kind of light, silly, wouldn't it be funny if such and such existed conversations? Like me and some coworkers were joking about the idea of a tactical smart car. And yep, that's pretty funny in my opinion. Or um, I came across a document that had a header called Raptor Surveys, which in the context of my civil engineering job is referring to like surveying for, I believe, uh, nesting locations of birds of prey. But what I immediately imagined when I first read that was something more akin to this. And so like I sent this around the office and we all had a good laugh about it. I think this is what AI art is good for. But you can even see like the more you stare at it, the less it makes sense and fits together. It's just none of it quite fits. But as just a one-off gag, it's pretty good. However, I mentioned that I wanted to use this as a jumping off point to talk about more general proliferation of AI tools. For instance, things like ChatGPT and AI chatbots and uh, language processing models in general, because these are also trained off of huge data sets of human generated data. And they can spit out information synthesized and mashed together very quickly. But there are some major problems. Like ChatGPT, a lot of people have been playing around with it, and there have been a few things that you notice very quickly. First of all, the answers it gives are kind of very middle of the road, generic, kind of bleh uh, summarizations of information. And it is often very confidently wrong. Just straight up factually incorrect about stuff. But Let's say that you're a content farm generating clickbait SEO, search engine optimization, non-tent, aka non-content. I think I coined that. I encourage you to please use it. If you are generating clickbait non-tent that's just meant to like grab eyeballs and get eyes on ads so that you can like skim some ad revenue, you don't really care if your like article's accurate and now you don't need to write them yourself or underpay a gig writer to write them. You can just spit them out way faster than a human ever could. So I actually think this is going to be a huge problem going forward. I think we're going to end up with AI models used to generate just like oceans of clickbait SEO non-tent and we're going to have to wade through it. And through that, we'll probably actually start to have AI text generation detection tools that will tell you if an article is written by AI so you can avoid it. And then the AI is going to get better and you're going to have an arms race there. That's my prediction. I think 
actually in all this video is going to be the thing that wins. This is maybe an optimistic take, but a lot of people talk about on YouTube, the algorithm, the content algorithm that recommends videos to people largely based on uh, interests and importantly, watch time. So my hope is that if people start to say, use scripts for videos generated by AI, then uh, people will recognize, oh, this is just kind of blah content or doesn't really offer anything of value. I'm gonna click off of it pretty quickly and watch something else. And hopefully that will mean that the more well thought out or authentic videos will still float to the top. Therefore, the dreaded watch time algorithm might actually like start to be helpful for at least uh, filtering quality. That's my hope anyway. But there's a bigger thing at play here, which is the fact that now we have an arms race between Google and Microsoft integrating AI chatbots into their search engines. Microsoft recently announced and like demonstrated a version of this where they've integrated uh, stuff by OpenAI into Bing. And Google basically freaked out and said, oh no, this is an actual threat to us. We've been investing in AI for like a decade and now suddenly we were caught lagging. And I've got some big uh, potential concerns with this, but to be fair to Microsoft, it looks like they have integrated it not necessarily as a direct source of information, but as a way to help you find what you're looking for more efficiently or to like harvest information from various places and mash it together in an easy to digest format. This is gonna be a tangent, but hopefully a worthwhile example. You know how if you search for song lyrics, it'll just serve them to you. You don't have to click on a web page, you just get them. Well. There was a minor kerfuffle over this where the lyrics aggregator site Genius was uh, accusing Google of basically scraping song lyrics from their site and then just displaying them, stealing the click from Genius. So the thing muddying the waters here is the fact that, well, Genius doesn't own those song lyrics either, and so uh, Google didn't get in trouble here. But the kind of cycle has been set up where a site goes through the trouble of either creating or aggregating information, and then Google just says, hey, I'll take that, and then steals the click from them and serves the information to the user directly. So they need content creators in order to have information to scrape, but then they kind of make sure that they make as little money as possible off of that content. So like if Genius just stopped allowing people to post song lyrics on it, theoretically, at least based off how it was a few years ago, Google wouldn't then have any place to pull the song lyrics from, but yet Google was actively punishing Genius for like existing and putting work in. Once again, a bit of a murkier example, but imagine this with original content or people doing actual like research. And hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. I am worried that these AI tools are going to be used to basically just steal clicks from actual people doing actual writing work. And this becomes another way for platforms to make money off of people's hard work whilst paying them as little as possible. But now like shunting that responsibility onto machines. And I think that's kind of gross. Once again, it doesn't seem like we're quite there yet, but it's a trajectory I'm seeing. Plus, there's still the issue of misinformation. These uh, AI bots get stuff wrong all the time, and it's pretty funny in the abstract, but if you're actually looking for information or maybe, say, you're someone susceptible to conspiracy theory garbage, maybe that sends you down a dark path. And like content algorithms have already been doing that, this might just make that worse. Now, I wanna be clear here. This is not old man yells at cloud or a Luddite's lament, uh, scared technophobe shakes fist at the new things because they're taking our gerbs. That's not what this is. I just think that these tools are in potentially very powerful and we should be really careful about how we use them and how we think about them. There's a term that I'm pretty sure I invented or maybe stole uh, that I'm going to call futurism brain rot, which I'm going to define as the uncritical veneration of any technology that seems 
vaguely futuristic. Think of all the times that some venture capital-backed tech bro firm reinvents trains but worse with pods and acts like that's the future. Buying into that kind of thing is what I would define as futurism brain rot. Or when crypto really took off and suddenly people were crypto traders and NFT connoisseurs and then it all collapsed and then everyone acted like, oh, I wasn't into that. I always knew it was stupid. This always happens with new tech where people will overhype it, even if that tech has incredible potential, like during the dot-com bubble. The internet did change our lives, but even then, people had this irrational exuberance just funneling money into anything with a dot-com on it until it was proved that like most of these companies didn't have an actual business model. And I get it. I love tech. I follow tech pretty closely. I love futuristic looking things and that's why I've been able to think about this for a lot longer because like it obviously futurism and tech stuff occupies a large portion of my brain sometimes and my concern is that now that Google and Microsoft are in an arms race they're maybe gonna like start to throw ethics to the wind a little bit and we're already seeing fallout of some of these tools like for instance uh deep fake um non-consensual sexual images have been created of people who did not consent to being sexualized but had their faces superimposed in on like you know sexual images and that's really gross and we should find that really concerning and try to like support tools that would make that stuff harder to exist but uh, it's you can't really put the genie back in the bottle at this point. I think that they should be fought probably with the law and with detection tools. But this stuff isn't going away. And I think we really should be careful about hyping it up and about venerating it. Because the more that we funnel our own money into these companies, the more that they can build stuff that may end up screwing us over. So that's the rant. Hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully that gave you some food for thought. If you'd like to see me tinker with some more AI stuff back when I was slightly more optimistic about it, you can check out these videos up over here. And of course, I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.